lot of you expressed last episode that you really would like the seed to this world. I apologize, I should have given it to you in episode one, but um, here it is now, down in the description. Go, go look at it, and you know what, if you want, maybe, while you're down there, you could um, subscribe, please. I would appreciate it. Okay, um, thank you, let's get into the episode. Welcome to Hardcore Minecraft. In this series, we are transforming a village in the new 1.20 update. Last episode, we got a good start to things, discovering archeology, span building a starter house, and starting to enchant some gear. But now, in order to progress even further, we need diamonds and lots more XP. So today, we hit the mines and see how many resources we can acquire. Oh, a fresh new day in Hardcore Minecraft. Last episode, we started on our enchanting table and, um, well, I'm still working on that, to be honest, but we also are really gonna need something to enchant, AKA diamonds. Here you go, cows. Oh, and chickens, why not? Since food is no longer much of an issue now that we have the farms up and running, I feel like it's finally time that we can probably hit the caves. I've got torches and a shield, and that's basically everything you need, right, to go caving, I think. Maybe, you know what, maybe I'll take the diamond pickaxe. I don't want to break it though, so I'll give it an unbreaking one enchant to at least have something on it. Okay, chickens, egg of good luck. I'm off in the caves. I decided to go caving near the mountains instead of by the village, mostly because I want a dripstone for a future lava farm, and I knew there was some there because of our spawn. I caved fairly carefully, getting lots of coal and copper and a tiny bit of iron. Eventually, I found a bigger dripstone cave section. It was a little dangerous, but I did also find a very lucky zombie spawner. We have other things to do at the moment though, so I'm not building anything with the spawner yet. I took the coordinates though, just in case I change my mind later on. The caving trip overall was pretty uneventful, to be honest, so I quickly returned to the surface with a couple of things that I had, began smelting them, and then just did some little work around the village. I decided, since I'm in hardcore mode, I could play this the super careful way and literally just turn sticks into diamond armor, which you do by trading with a Fletcher and then trading with an armorer, which I have thanks to this lovely little village. It didn't take me long to get into the groove of playing the game again, and before long, I had spent my entire morning just kind of going around the village, picking at little things here and there. I have spent my entire morning on Minecraft doing basically nothing. I mean, I, I technically did lots, but I feel like we could really up the productivity. So it's time for our first villager house transformation of the day, and this one is up. It's deconstruction time. Okay, brilliant, a nice blank slate to work with. Quick break to feed the cows. I think this area definitely lends itself first and foremost to a diagonal build. This will help us sort of optimize this space and still have a good pathway through here to the blacksmith. It will upgrade that eventually. Obviously, the pink theme is still going strong, but I also think that I want to include some different types of wood. So I'm gonna incorporate a little bit of dark oak here, I believe. Just kind of see how this looks as our little roof line. I really like this. I just wish it was one block taller. Yep, I think I like that. And since it's gonna be for our armorer, I wanna do a little extra structure back here. And for that, I'm gonna need some more birch wood. I promise eventually in this world, we will use something for the buildings other than the super pastel birch wood and cherry wood. It's a combination that I really like at the moment, and the other blocks that I really wanna use for this village to try it with the new cherry wood are a little harder to obtain. So for now, we're stuck with a sort of starter build palette. Nailed it. That honestly already makes this area look so much more cohesive and also safe for the villager. So I'm gonna go ahead and move a couple of my smiths inside of that building. Hopefully they'll all enjoy working in here. I don't know how they keep getting on my roof. <laughs> I've spent a ton of time today just sitting around trading with all of my villagers and I've been unlocking a lot of the smiths. They appear to like their new armory. <laughs> I've also been working a bunch in here on the inside, and as you can see, we've unlocked a diamond shovel and a diamond pickaxe from this armory. Sometimes I do wonder if I get a little carried away when I'm building, but you really do kind of need all of this when you're working with villagers because God, they just they just find their way onto the silliest of areas. Sorry, dude. There's a there's a front door. 
We're gonna learn how to use it. Hopefully that'll solve that. Of course, my stick to diamond armor empire has totally paid off because our armorer can officially trade us all of these goodies. Oh my goodness, it's wonderful. <laughs> oh yeah, most fashionable hardcore player coming up. And I think we'll store our previous armor in here in the armory. Uh, thank you everybody. We'll have to put some fancy designs on our new stuff as well. I'm, I'm kind of gonna miss the purple. We have a bunch of lava in the blacksmith, so while I'm in here, I'm going to get my bucket and bring it over there so that we can get infinite lava. This should help a bunch of smelting. I've been smelting a bunch of the extra helmets and stuff that this guy was giving me as I was trading. Now that we've got all this snazzy new diamond armor and a diamond pickaxe, it's time to go mine. Which, of course, I've set up this little area between the blacksmith and the armory for. Having a strip mine in hardcore is pretty important because it's arguably one of the safer ways to go and get diamonds. And now that we have all of these smithing templates, we're gonna wanna duplicate those. And that requires diamonds. So right after I finish making this pretty, we're gonna hit the mines. This may take a while. This is level 16, which is important because this is where I'll need to mine iron. I have been digging for quite a while and I've just broken out into this area that has this cave. I'm really excited about this, not just because it's a cave and it looks cool, but because I actually wanna turn this into like a minecart system where we can come up and down from our mines. That's why I'm digging it so big. So if you like this, we'll definitely be an asset. As for the actual digging though, I have a lot to do and my inventory's full, so it's time for for a quick run back to the surface. Oh dear, it's nighttime. Good morning, villagers. For now, this will work for storage. Let's go back in the mines. We have a lot to do if we're going to make it to diamond level. I feel like it's almost refreshing to dig to the bottom of the world in this way. I feel like this is usually only something that I do once per world save because, well, you really only need a staircase to the bottom of the world once. Once you get further into the game, the caves do all the work. I'm doing this between doing a bunch of gardening outside. I'm, I'm growing tomatoes this year and also peppers and one cucumber plant that my grandmother gave me. So if you have any tomato gardening advice, leave it down below. I'm interested. I'm very interested. Oddly, the mix of tomato gardening and mining in Minecraft is nice. It's almost soothing, I would say. Currently, we are at negative eight. So, um, we're gonna be here for a while. Breaking out into lots of caves though, which I haven't explored any of them yet because I'm just trying to get us to the bottom of the world. I am excited about this though. It, it does give us the opportunity to explore quite a lot. Oh, I do see some lapis there though, and I do really need that because I have level 30, but um, I can't use it yet. Uh, just let me sneak down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't see anybody. The lapis is all mine. Perfect. Oh, I love a good caving adventure. I so want to just continue going through these, but I have to focus. Wait, there's diamonds. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, this is fine, I'm sure. Nobody shoot me. I'm in my little box with my diamonds. <laughs> Looks like we've got a cluster of three diamonds here. That's exciting. I'm running for it. Ah, they're fighting each other. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't actually pick up the diamonds because I realized we have level 30. So I should definitely buy a second pickaxe for my villager and try and get fortune. Or silk touch. Either would be fine. Gonna need some more emeralds first. Oh, hello golem. Don't worry, I, I got more iron from the mines. Toolsmith, 23 diamonds. Thank you. I love villagers. All I gotta do is disenchant that and see if we can get something a little bit better. Unbreaking three, please. Eh, efficiency four. Well, it's better than the pickaxe I was using previously. Take all my sticks. Huh. Out of sock. Slowly working on this weapon smith as well, which is nice because it gives iron axes, which I do need. We can get efficiency four, or we can get protection four. Honestly, I'm gonna go for that. Oh, for goodness sake. Enchanting luck today is horrible. It's still better than the default villager unbreaking two boots though, so I'll take it. And for now, it's back in the mines. <laughs> At least now I finally have efficiency. This should actually speed me up. 
Oh yeah, this is way better. I did it! This is why level negative 58. It's so deep that my render distance has just given up and I can see the clouds. This, however, is finally the layer where we can do all of our diamond mining. Why can I hear thunder underground? Um, oh dear. You know what, on second thought, probably shouldn't do any diamond mining until I actually get fortune, so uh, let's go check on the villagers. I haven't installed any lightning rods yet and I am a tiny bit nervous. Oh dear. Hello, how have you spawned? Shouldn't be possible. Not to fear everyone, I'm here to sleep. Maybe it's time we make a couple of these lightning rods. Just in case, you know. We can put one up here on this blacksmith. That should be a safe distance from villagers, and a second one on this tower. Yeah, that oughta do it. The other bonus of digging a strip mine is we get to build out of deep slate, which is definitely one of my favorite blocks. I don't really remember how I built before I had this. And I think a cute little chimney on this armory makes a lot of sense. I am sorry, but the floor of this area is just really starting to bother me. It's gotta go. That is much better. I can focus now. Now, if I am going to continue the level of productivity that I've kept up in this episode, I need a couple of things. Mainly, I need the fortune enchantment, but in order to get that, I need 30 levels. Over and over and over again until I finally get it, because we all know it's not gonna be easy. My serious need for XP has me thinking about that zombie grinder that I found earlier in the episode. Creating a simple zombie XP farm should be no problem. Oh, well, it'll be exactly one problem, actually. You see, to make one, we don't need any redstone, thankfully, because we don't have any, but we do need soul sand. The soul sand is to lift the zombies up easily so they can then fall back down and be within punching range. I probably shouldn't punch the air in hardcore mode. Now, I'm sure I could do it the old fashioned way without soul sand, but I think a trip to the nether shouldn't be too hard. We do have eight obsidian and I, I think we need 10. That's okay, luckily I made a lava farm for this very occasion. Might be odd, but I feel like a nether portal would actually look really good right about there. Listen, I know it wasn't needed, but it's somehow at the same time it was, it was needed. There we go, a nether portal. I feel like I should get bonus points because I did make it villager safe. Ah, uh, it's just no better time than to try to go in the nether. <laughs> oh, please let there not be a gas right away. Okay. Oh, you know what? It's actually not that bad. I forgot to wear gold. I do this every time. Oh, hold on, I come back. Golden helmet. Just what I needed. Definitely want to scoop up as much of this quartz as I can. Plus it gives great XP. Ooh, fun little bastion. I feel like I could probably handle it, right? Hello, little brutes. Um, do you want to come fight? I got a fun little boating activity for you. Oh, yep. Come on, dude. Yes. See, nothing to worry about. <laughs> oh, fine. Definitely didn't need to take a ton of measures there. Uh huh. All in all, nothing too exciting going on here, although I do enjoy some gilded blackstone, so I'll take that. I have a hard time assessing if their noises mean that they're mad at me or if they're just existing. I think they're just existing. I finally see a little bit of soul sand. Only need a couple of pieces, should be totally fine. Nice, got it. Oh, I've been wanting to use this color of wood. Don't fall in the lava. I haven't actually tried it yet, but I bet this wood color would go fantastic with cherry wood. I'll just take a tiny bit for sampling for now. I can always come back to here later. For now, I think I got what I needed. Let's head back to the village. All right, it's officially time. I think I've gathered everything that I need. I got two buckets of water and some soul sand and some wood, because we'll probably need gates or signs or something. And, and that should do it, I think. That should be all I need. Well, and a pickaxe to dig, because we're gonna have to do a lot of digging and maybe some more torches. Oh, and my bed. 
Okay, here we are. Pretty standard zombie spawner. Of course, I did already take the loot, but we'll remove the chest now, and I guess we can start digging it out. All in all, this should be a pretty easy job. The only thing that I am slightly nervous about is like a creeper walking up from the cave and just exploding the spawner. So maybe I should light up some of these little caves. Yeah, it's looking pretty dangerous down there. Always need more iron for hoppers though, so this is definitely welcome. Oh, I would love to explore the rest of this cave. You're just the worst. Oh wait, here goes nothing. I just wanna light a little bit more of this up. There are so many skeletons down here and zombies. I said to let my dog out and this was probably the most stressful log back in that I've ever experienced. <laughs> okay, it's fine, it's fine. I got it, thank you. Ooh, hello. I definitely don't need to light up this whole cave, but just having a couple of torches down to take some of the pressure off would be good. I think that's probably good, just... There's another dungeon down here. How long have I been standing right next to that? <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Um, I did skeletons. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, we're chill, we're chill. Oh, thanks for the pants. Nice. Oh, we got another saddle, I love it. We should make a stables for the horses at some point. Oh, and another one, let's go. Okay, I'll be honest, a skeleton spawner is way better than a zombie spawner. However, this one might be in range of that zombie spawner. Now that everything's all lit up, I'm gonna take the time and just spiral upwards and see if I can find that zombie one. Okay, just for a visual, that's the zombie spawner. This is the skeleton spawner. Do you know what? This might actually work. I know I haven't really mentioned it a ton yet, but finding a double spawner like this is insanely lucky. This is the first time in the survival world that I have ever had one that wasn't a cave spider spawner. So I was extremely excited and I definitely wanted to do this the right way, which meant finding a spot in between the two spawners where both of them could be active. This can be really tricky to do, but after a lot of digging up and, and down and up, and down, I finally found the perfect spot where both spawners could be active and I could build a place for them to drop into where I could get XP. Once I had the middle point figured out, it was just a matter of actually building the farms, which at this point in my Minecraft career, I've done a bunch of times, so I wasn't too worried with this part. All right, the farms are almost ready to hook up. I just forgot one key ingredient. In order to bring them all the way up and have them fall into here, I'm gonna need kelp. I can't believe I forgot the kelp. Unfortunately, this is classed as a really big river. So uh, no kelp, gotta go a little further out. Here we are, some kelp. Not the greatest day to be on the water, I'll admit. This should be perfect. Oh, don't drown. With the kelp acquired, I was now able to make what was arguably the most important requirement of the spawner, the bubble elevator. Bubble elevators were going to lift the mobs up to the top and drop them down to a chamber where I could kill them. It is always so stressful building these things, but I think I've done it. This is the zombie one. It all flows into there and they go up. They should fall into this collection area right here with a hopper and a chest. The skeletons have kind of the same deal. They all flow in there. They go up to the collection area. I really hope I did this right. I don't really have a lot of experience with double mob spawners, so I, I just did my best. It's time for the scariest part of all though, the part where I remove the torches. Oh gosh, oh, they spawn so instantly. Stop it. No, not me, go. Okay, I mean, they're fighting each other, but that's just because they saw me. Oh, they're going, yes. I actually think that was really successful. We got the drops. They were fighting each other and therefore they took damage and so they, they died. But the next set, hopefully that comes in should live. Unless I did the math wrong. It's entirely possible that I did do the math wrong. So, um, we'll just wait for a moment. Nailed it! We've got skeletons! Which means it's time to unleash the zombies. Okay, it's fine. Everybody's okay. Yeah, you guys, you can have a good time. 
Uh, it's a bit of a fixer-upper. Oh yeah, it's working. It's working great. Oh, I'm so excited and look at all the stuff we're getting. We finally can have a bow. This is our first bow. That's pretty good. We're also finally gaining access to a bunch of bones and also a bunch of rotten flesh. And most importantly, lots and lots of XP. Oh, and a carrot. <laughs> 36 levels should probably do it. I need to head back up to the surface with all of my goodies, at least as many goodies as I can fit, and get back to work in the village. After all, I was doing all this just to get some diamonds. Um, it, it's been a very productive couple of hours in this cave, though. I will eventually have to make a better way in and out. Ah, home sweet home in my little village. Hopefully all of the villagers have survived my excursions. The iron golems seem to be working very hard, though, so it's all good. Now, I'm gonna disenchant my boots because I really want feather falling, and we'll try our luck between the diamond pickaxe and the diamond boots. You know what? Maybe I should also try my luck with a book. Hold on. Okay, we can do Unbreaking 3 or Depth Strider 3. And honestly, I've been in the water a lot, so meh. Depth Strider. It's no feather falling, but it's better than just protection. And now we have another efficiency enchant or Sweeping Edge. Oh, you know what? Sweeping Edge would be kind of good for that new mob farm. I'd rather risk it on the pickaxe, though. Oh, thank goodness I did. <laughs> This is a perfect pickaxe. All it needs is mending. Fortune three and breaking three and efficiency four. That's awesome. Now I can finally go and get those diamonds. Oh, I've been waiting all day for this. Now there were two main patches where I left diamonds and I think this was one of them. Yeah, there we go. That one right there. Not bad. Oh, and we get a bonus one. So those four diamonds actually became seven. That was definitely worth it. Now, is there any more diamonds down here? Nope, don't see any. Sorry, skeleton, not today. Oh, and the last patch was just right there. Hey, buddy. Ouch. Okay, I've made some zombies angry. I'm just gonna grab the diamond and I'll be right out of the way. Okay, it was just one, it was just one. Maybe I'll go back and explore that on a later date, but for now, nine diamonds. Oh yeah, we're rich. We should be able to spend a lot of time down here now getting super rich. <gasps> yep, there we go, redstone and diamonds. Oh, it's glorious. Ooh, and a little bit of gold. Don't mind if I do. Yes, even more diamonds. Here we go. Unfortunately, I'm all out of torches. Oop. So I feel like this is a good place to stop. We got lots of redstone and 26 diamonds, which is certainly not bad. The main thing is I finally have a place where I can easily go strip mining. This will make life a lot simpler. I feel like we worked really hard in this episode. We got diamonds, we made a mob spawner, we went to the nether. Those are a lot of very grindy things to do. And um, to show for it, we are currently on day 64 of this world, which is a fair amount of days for episode two. I think as a treat, since we have been working so hard in this world and on this village, we deserve to do a little bit more building. So I'm, I'm gonna get all of my lovely building materials. Oh, and maybe some of the crimson stem that I got in the nether and definitely some amethyst. You know, I haven't really gotten a chance to try out these new chiseled bookshelves yet. Huh, why not? Since today's episode focused a lot on this enchanting table, I think we'll build ourselves a nice place to enchant all of our new gear. Unfortunately, I haven't yet enchanted Silk Touch, so this is a slight waste of wood. Oh, and it's raining, come on. I think I do enjoy this sort of location for the enchanting table. I just wanna make it a bit fancier. So let's sink it into the ground and surround it by the bookshelves. I think we're gonna use crimson planks, maybe some cherry slabs, and definitely some cherry fences. Oh, and some cherry leaves. Obviously we've gotta have cherry leaves. The theme that we're very much going for in this village is pink and purple which I am absolutely thrilled about because these are colors that I've never really touched before in Minecraft. I don't really know if this mix is gonna look any good, but I'm kind of trying something. Using basically a bunch of leaves in the roof combined with some pink and purple slabs. Also really loving this bark color with the crimson. I feel like there's a gradient starting there. I just 
really don't have the rest of the blocks. Oh, you know what? It's nighttime. I should, I should sleep. Oh, that's better. You know what? I actually think that this little gazebo is not looking too bad so far. I've been wanting to do one of these for a while. I feel like I see people do nice little gazebos all the time for their enchanting, and I've just never really done one. Okay, there we go, villagers. Here is our new little enchanting area. Oh, it's cute, I think. And we can finally store a bunch of books in these. I love that. We can put them in different locations. And you get different colors. Oh, cute. Obviously, I'm going to have to also clean up this chest situation. Let's do some pink petals for the finishing touch around this area. I'm obsessed with the way that these stack together. They're so cute. And I think that is our adorable little enchanting room. All finished and so cute. I'm so excited to work with even more colors around this village and start getting into much bigger and more epic transformations. This is only episode two and hopefully we have a lot in store, assuming I don't die. So I hope that you'll subscribe, give this video a like to support it and tune in next time. Goodbye everybody.